Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension and today it's uh, something new I'm starting. Um, this is uh, question and answers with Wolfgang. You know, Wolfgang from Tools for Ascension with Wolfgang. So what I'm doing here is um, just going through the uh, public comments you know, on my videos so in that way I do not uh, break any uh, confidentiality. Um, you know, I also get a lot of interesting emails where I feel like, oh my god, you know, the answer is wasted in a way that, uh, you know, the public could benefit, you know, um, from this, you know, there are good questions and these are issues uh, that uh, many people are facing. So, um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, um, how to handle this. I could just make it very incognito. Um, that's probably the way to go so that nobody could be, uh, you know, f figured out, oh, this was you, you know, and now 10,000 people know about this, you know, um, I definitely <laughs> like to avoid this kind of issues and karma, you know, so you are safe with me. Um, you know, so, but I would probably would disguise it into generalities so that nobody can be figured out. Um, so I invite, um, you know, questions, you know, about any kind of topics. I mean, pff, you know, probably what's up my alley. So uh, are you now my videos, and so, um, you know, ask whatever you desire. Um, you know, I will uh, pick <laughs> and so answer the questions, you know, uh, that I can answer, you know, uh, with good conscience, you know. Um, so I'm not all knowing, <laughs> but I have a lot of experience, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, so let's just uh, start here. And, and for those that do not know me, um, there's a video on, you know, who is Wolfgang. Uh, you can watch that. And as well as um, I've been doing past life regressions for about. 20 years or longer and I also combine that with um, I don't use a normal induction you know I use uh, I work with uh, chakras and uh, connecting your energies and uh, connecting to your high self and then having dialogue you know with your high self with your inner child uh, with parallel realities <laughs> and you know um, things like that, um, you know, for enlightenment, you know, to clear trauma, to um, clear tr uh, karma, you know, all kinds of things, um, to, you know, to find out what is going on, you know, why we're sick, etc., etc. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I get to, I'm not really that psychic, you know, um, so, but I get to ask um, a lot of high selves and other beings, you know, higher than those high selves. <laughs> and I get a lot of information from this. So it is fun. So let's just uh, start. So this is from Semi Coupe. Um, I had an emotional experience. It was the closest I have been able to come to the Inuit, you know, Eskimo, I think, shaman that I dreamed about during a life-threatening illness four years ago. I started sobbing uncontrollably because I missed him so much and I asked him to help me get back home. Not sure what I meant by this. In sync with the universe and in harmony, I think. Thank you, Wolfgang. So, um, first of all, congratulations, you know, for getting through to the other side, you know too bad that you had to be sick, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, those things there uh, cause a breakthrough, you know, and so, uh, so you either, you know, uh, you probably were Inuit in the past lifetimes, or probably many past lifetimes, um, and of course they have shamans, you know, so either, you know, this was uh, one of your ancestors, you know, from your clan, you know, from your family. I mean, there weren't that many people around there. 
So this was a very close-knit society where everybody knew everybody and was related with everybody. And uh, so, uh, you know, or it was like your own incarnations where you were a shaman. And uh, most most shamans, you know, they are not ghosts. They can travel through the dimensions. Uh, but they maintain their individuality, you know, like looking after their ancestors. So, uh, you know, so they are enlightened being, like an aspect of your high self, you could say, you know. Um, so uh, he probably uh, not only saved you, uh, you know, but also came to say hello, and you might have to learn things from him, right? So now this whole coming home thing, you know, this happens a lot. I mean, uh, this kind of crying out of love, you know, by meeting somebody and feeling the energy, this happens pretty much in every session <laughs> I do with somebody. You know. Uh, I, you know, that's part of my letter, you know, yeah, have have no mascara and paper towels ready. <laughs> you know. So for many times it's when people meet their inner child for the first time, you know, it's just so warming, you know, it's like meeting an old friend. And so you met an old friend there, you know, so when you start crying suddenly, um, you know, this means you're not making this up. <laughs> you know, your emotions, that tell you, you know, that there is something behind it, you know. So, yeah, you were meeting, you know, like, uh, you know, from a lifetime that was uh, very beautiful, you know, where things were in harmony. You know, that's where kind of coming home is, you know. Um, so those native people, you know, those cultures that are being lost now, that are being destroyed, uh, basically by Western culture, by materialism, uh, hope not, you know, that's where we have a revival, you know. So, uh, but, um, yeah, those people, you know, they uh, traveled a lot into the spirit dimensions, and um, and so they were uh, quite a balanced people, you know, compared to modern men, especially compared to modern men, you know, with this overflow of information, <laughs> much of it useless information. So. Um, you know, this is this coming home. You know, this also happens when, you know, like, uh, people that uh, have inc Pleiadian incarnations, you know, they meet their Pleiadians, you know. Many of them just start crying and feel coming home, you know. Uh, so, um, this is a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else we have. So this is Chelsea Chambers, and she thank you so much for posting this. I've recently become aware of my possible path as a shaman, and how I've been looking for places to learn more. I'm looking for guidance about what to do next now that I know I was a shaman in the past, and I'm wanting to continue on that path now. Looking forward to learning more. So, um, of course, you know, many of us uh, live in cities and live a modern Western lifestyle, and shamanism is a very different lifestyle, <laughs> you know, close to nature, and uh, many times, you know, the great austerities have to be performed, uh, you know, or certain drugs, you know, consumed. Um, you know, plus uh, there is probably also a lot of uh, cheating going on <laughs> uh, because there is a great demand, you know, f for shamans and, um, you know, where there is a demand, you know, uh, money can be made, you know, and advantage can be taken. But I'm not here to judge anybody, you know. Um, so, but I have I mean, you know, this video out uh, meeting your inner shaman. And uh, so, due to this, I have a lot of clients that also like to meet the inner shamans. And um, first of all, you know, the shamans that they're 
you know, they, they, they meet, you know, I ask the questions. <laughs> and then, you know, they get the answers, you know, so they get shown what they before didn't see, you know. So if you don't know what to ask for, you know, you're not going to get an answer, you know. If you don't know what to look for, you know, you're not going to see this, right. So, you know, I'm asking, you know, um, those shamans to show them, you know, what they are doing in those different ceremonies, right? And it makes a lot of sense, you know, and a lot of stuff is very, very good. And it's powerful. It is powerful, you know. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot from that. And so, and but all those things, you know, can be done, um, you know, that they're shown, you know, can be done um, by those people. You know, it's just basically a combination of breath work, um, you know, uh, like a form of Qigong, right? Uh, uh, also, you know, controlling your, your chakras, you know, also working with, with beings and invo invoking, uh, you know, benevolent beings and um, ways of raising your vibration, like connecting to the earth, you know, all the shamans know how to run energy with Mother Earth, and they connect with the mountains, they connect with the energies of trees, you know, they are um, being told, they commune with nature, I mean, communing, I mean, like, not some esoteric, like, uh, I mean, that is good too, they do that too, but um, <laughs> it's like, they ask the question and they get an answer. You know, so they're being shown where those plants are. Um, uh, they, some of them get shown how to prepare them. Some of them actually invoke the goddesses or consciousnesses above there, you know, on the bruise. They do kind of alchemy things. And um, uh, many of them, you know, um, do healings. And it's interesting, you know, who they invoke. You know, uh, some of them you know, invoke their, um, their, how would you say, uh, their past lives, you know, they align, that was interesting, you know, they, they, all the past lives are aligned together, which is very, very powerful. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, some work with energies, you know, this dancing, and especially dancing in a circle, you know, so they create an energy vortex that's uplifting, you know, and that cleanses, it's like an astral fire that's around, you know, that's swirling, uh, you know, so, of course, as a Western anthropologist, you know, they think, oh, call out those silly people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> singing to spirits that don't exist because they're primitive, they don't understand. No, 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 you know, when uh, those clients, they see this, you know, uh, because they ask that they be shown, you know, what is going on on the energy level, they see, you know, how uh, the energies are being created, uh, etc. So it's uh, uh, very interesting. So I think, um, you know, as how they commune with trees and, and other beings. Um, it's all breath work, it's all, you know, running love, basically what I teach, you know, in my videos. You know, all these inductions, you know, it's what those are doing. Um, so, you know, in a way, you know, they're all doing more or less uh, the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, not all of them, I mean, doing the heavy lifting, you know, um, like this with gods and curses and, and things like that, you know, um, but on a certain level, you know, they're very helpful, very functional, and, you know, describing more, you know, a way how to live in a paradise. So I would say, you know, I mean, I lived with a shaman for two weeks in the jungles of uh, Sri Lanka, and he was, you know, his actually his helper was possessed by Kali and danced in the fire and just grabbed coals. So, I mean, I've been lucky to, I mean, I've seen lots of shamans, <laughs> I think, you know. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, yeah, those things are all there, they're possible. Um, I've experienced it, I've seen it, you know. Um, and I would say, you know, first thing is um, to, um, I would say, do a session first. You know, this is not that expensive. You know, it's not that entangling. It's doing it over Skype. But just see, you know, how you cut out 
and what you can learn, you know, just from the spirit teacher inside, you know. <laughs> uh, if you ask the right questions, you know, you can learn very, very fast from those guys, mm -hmm. because they're very smart. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, so here we have uh, Liberty Pet Coach. It was pretty cool. I saw a white dog and I have never met this dog ever. I'm a dog trainer. Maybe it's telling me to work on it. And my great, 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 grandmother was a shame. And thank you for letting me learning from this uh, to get back again. So first of all, you know, I would say, you know, if you really don't know, and if you're kind of rather psychic, you know, invoke your highest guidance, your protection, you know, and like Archangel Michael, you know, he gladly protects you. <laughs> don't think that Jesus or whatever, you know, uh, or any divine beings, you know, do not want you to have divine guidance, you know, whatever helps, you know. <laughs> um, so, um, so you can check, you know, that one easy way, you know, with a pendulum, you know, simple yes or no, you know, questions, you know, if the dog that you saw was kind of symbolic, like a totem animal, you know, so that's kind of like an angelic force, a totem animal, you know, it's not an individual, it's more like the angelic overshadowing intelligence over a certain species. Right, uh, that uh, maybe uh, covers like thousands or millions, you know, or more beings, right? So they also work with humans, you know, and the animals, you know, are their physical bodies here, that are their uh, extensions, you know, that could be possible. Another one is where, you know, you um, <coughs> met um, like an old buddy of yours, you know, so we have been living with dogs for thousands of years, you know, um, just like with the horse, you know, our life depended on them, we hunted together, we, they protected, they gave their life. See, I start to cry because I probably still have trauma about losing pets, so I like to release that and I love my pets to be released into the heavens. Amen. Yeah, so, you know, there's this very deep bonding, you know. Um, humans have stuff with humans, <laughs> betrayal and, and things like this, but um, humans do not have that much stuff as animals. I mean, unless they got bitten and torn up by pieces to pieces by dogs, you know, or <coughs> by, you know, got hurt by snakes, you know, of course there is a phobia there, especially when there's still ghosts around, you know that I have a phobia, so, uh, but I'm getting sidetracked here. So yeah, so it could be like a historical dog for you, you know, that you have been a companion lifetime after lifetime, you know, so you can ask the pendulum, you know, or your own intuition, you know, yes would be an upflow of energy, you know, and no would be a downflow of energy, like, you know, this is <laughs> like a totem animal, you know, aspect, you know, and this is uh, historical, you know, so just do it, judge it for yourself, don't give your power away to me, right? And uh, so, you know, so you're working with, with dogs, right? So you have a very, very strong connection, so it's definitely probably a totem animal. And I would suggest that you, you know, get into animal communication, you know, um, this is kind of one of the frontiers of where human consciousness expands. You know, where we, uh, I mean, you know, my dogs, they were projecting very crisp energies into my mind, <laughs> you know, when they got through. So they were very skilled, right? I mean, we just kind of learning, you know, uh, through animal communicators, how animal functions as multidimensional beings as governed by higher intelligences, you know, how they're connected to source, you know, so these things are becoming possible nowadays. And so, yeah, if you're working in that arena, you know, um, and bringing in the new, the higher consciousness, this is definitely something to explore. 
you know, if you want, you can do a session with me, you know, um, that probably can do it, you know, but also inform yourself, you know, uh, what other animal communicators do. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube, you know, there, you know, I hope this helps. And so, what do we have here? Nabe Shogun. Shogun. Was, uh, you mentioned a hyperactive mind being problematic. I find in the various things I try, this consistently proves a problem after so many years of relying on and feeding my internal monologue. Any tips? Well, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> you know, you are aware that you're having an inner monologue. And um, there are several methods um, that are very effective, you know, in um, stopping your inner monologue, right? Um, so um, some of them come from Carlos Castaneda, you know, the teaching of Don Juan, you know, the, uh, like a Mexican shaman. And um, basically what he described, the technique that's very good, is where you take your eyes out of focus, you know, and I can just do it like that. Some people may have to struggle with this. And then everything is blurred, and the analytical mind gets, you know, uh, overloaded and um, will not, uh, and, you know, th disturbs the inner dialogue, right? It does not get entangled. Uh, of course, personally, you know, I like to just reside in the heart, you know, that also stops the inner dialogue, you know. Uh, when I was younger, uh, you know, I uh, resided more in, in, you know, in my head, you know, because I, I cut off from my heart, you know, it was too painful there, so that was the reason why I was a head case. <laughs> it was safe, at least there. You know, emotionally, that was just too hurtful because of the situation I was in. So um, that could be a one reason, you know, um, that you are in a hurtful situation and are retreating into the mental plane where there are no emotions, just concepts. Right. Um, so then the other technique is, um, the, you know, basically um, it's uh, crown chakra breathing. You know, um, I figured out that when you, uh, you know, breathe into your crown chakra, um, you know, that, uh, you know, you're open to your higher consciousness, you know, that's above thought forms, you know, um, like uh, <laughs> energies and, uh, you know, undigestive concepts, you know, more abstract, more compact, more information. Um, so, uh, when when that is open, you know, your inner dialogue, you know, stops, you know, and that's kind of when, you know, when the crown chakra is open and your inner dialogue stops, then suddenly, you know, you have what's considered downloads, you know, which are visions, insights, like, oh, yeah, man, you know, the where you're thinking outside the box, right, and many times it's your high soul or your spirit guides or some benevolent beings that you know, tries to help and assist humanity or assist you in your personal evolution, you know, that uh, pops, you know, those ideas, uh, you know, into your mind. Uh, but that would not be, you know, the incessant, you know, um, mulling over. Now, another thing is, you know, that um, our subconscious, especially also our pineal gland, you know, responds to color. So at night, uh, when you look at the blue screen, you know, and all this um, communication video screens, you know, they have a blue vibration to them. And that means uh, it's daytime and, you know, you, you, you know it uh, affects your circadian rhythm. And, you know, you, you are all pumped, you know, and uh, none of the sleep hormones are being released. So, you know, <coughs> uh, do not, you know, watch anything, any TV, or, you know, any computer. That's just one reason is so this blue vibration that messes with your circadian rhythm, you know, red color would be great, right? 
uh, like stare into a fire, that will relax you. <laughs> yeah. Staring into the fire will also automatically uh, uh, cause relaxation, you know, and also, you know, introspection, your eyes go out of focus and you introspect. And actually, I am having a video on, um, I have a campfire meditation. You know, it's just a tiny introduction. The rest is surround sound, cicadas. Uh, sometimes you hear a beer can cracking, and but most of the time you hear the crackling of the fire. And you know, there are close-ups, little wider shots. So if you have a surround sound system, put that on, and uh, you know, you have that at night, you know, in your computer screen or TV screen. And um, so th that will help, right? And also, you do not want to have any exciting, um, you know, uh, videos or books, you know. So, for instance, if you see violence, you know, automatically, uh, you know, um, by resonance or just survival instinct, you know, your own adrenaline kicks in, <laughs> you know, and. You know, you go in with those punches and, oh God, you know, having fear and, you know, this is uh, why we watch those movies, you know, because we get a resonance and it gives us excitement. But, you know, if you want to do this like before you sleep, you know, and you get one of those adrenaline squirts, you know, you're going to be up for an hour or two, you know, unless you go out and chop wood and, you know, work this adrenaline off, right? So, nothing exciting. Uh, yeah, so crown chakra uh, and eyes out of focus, you know, these are, you know, some of the easiest, uh, you know, ways. And and then, of course, you know, one of the funnest ways is basically, you know, running love. You know, this is what I, I generally do when I have idle time. <laughs> You know, I just uh, hook up, you know, draw or, you know, open up to the love from heaven on earth that flows into me, smile like an idiot and just expand it in me, you know, and then, you know, once I'm all juiced up and, you know, there's extra coming in, you know, uh, send it to loved ones or, you know, or people that need it or, you know, send it to the plants or into the walls of your office, you know, just do good stuff with it. You know, so that automatically uh, you're of the, uh, you know, the mental plane then too. All right, so I hope that helps. All right, so what do we have here now? Judy Abe Thompson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and smiley face. My whole body was vibrating. I was crying tears of joy. My love and blessings to you always. Thank you so much. I love that. So basically, uh, my whole body was vibrating. You know, um, you know those kind of body symptoms. You know, they show you. You know that what you're going through is not just some mental BS. You know, uh, you know that there is actually something going on. You know, and that you also understand that you would not make up stuff like that. <laughs> No, even if you try it, you know, it's suddenly better, you know, than you would do. <laughs> you know, that is always like when people, what? You know, go, what? Or, wow, you know, uh, when it just blows their mind, then you know they're not making it up. People are making stuff up. You know, that is within their uh, purview of reality. You know, that's what they all you know. They can't make stuff up that they don't know about. So... You know, so this body vibration, you know, shows you, yeah, you know, there is something heavy duty happening, you know. And generally body vibration means there's a lot of chi of energy flowing through your body, a lot of it, you know. And so it's like as if you, you know, uh, run a lot of electricity or high voltage through a wire, you know, and it's... Um, so your nervous system is like everything is like suddenly, you know, we are having double the ionic charge <laughs> and things have to adjust, you know, so and it affects everything, you know, and especially you feel it through the nervous system, which of course filters down into everything else, you know, and it also triggers certain hormones in your brain, you know. 
And so then the crying tears of joy. You know, in, in Hinduism, in Bhakti Yoga, and, and I studied this for many, many, many years, you know, this is being described of, you know, uh, religious ecstasy. And, um, you know, in relation, you know, to divinity, uh, you know, of the heart opening, and this is a very cherished thing, and is generally a sign of spiritual advancement. You know, if you cannot uh, cry, you know, uh, tears of love, you know, oh, you got a broken heart, <laughs> you're missing out on, on, you know, strong, wonderful emotions, right? Uh, so it is, uh, you know, cherished and considered, you know, to be a very advanced, uh, you know, um, emotion. And it again shows, you know, that you're not making stuff up, you know, because, you know, you cannot just, you know, cry out of love, you know, on demand. Maybe you can smile like an idiot on demand, but not cry out of love. All right. <laughs> okay. So now we have Leslie Rodriguez. Thank you. I have been divided in my heart about my future in the healing art. To be precise, I do not like the way Western health care practices often contribute to people feeling powerless to heal themselves. Yeah, I'm all the way with you, right? You know, doctors get adored. <laughs> That's what I, I find and feel, you know. So in this guided meditation, my inner shaman showed up, so this is the inner shaman guided meditation, and pushed me into the ocean twice. Then he pushed me into the air and told me to fly. So he's connecting you, I mean, right off the bat, to the elements, you know, and ocean is, means probably water means always emotion, you know, and probably ocean means more mass consciousness instead of just the lake, you know, so... Uh, but definitely something with, with emotions. And let's see. And the air then. And then air, of course, is the higher point of view. When I asked him how long he has been with me, he said, across all my lifetimes. Well, well, well. So he then proceeded to show me that he has always been my backbone. Yeah, you know, we find this a lot, this male high selves and spirit guides, you know, they give energy and this can be felt when they get closer or when they step into the body that, you know, the spinal energy, you know, the Kundalini is just pops and perks up. <laughs> and this is always cool, my inner child always likes that, <laughs> you know, and they just, you know, tingles and, and, and things. And so this is actually in a, you know, energetic way. And then, of course, the energetic way, of, you know, affects the, the spine. And, of course, also according to Louisa Hayes and, you know, other insights, you know, where the body is seen as uh, a symbol for psychological issues, you know, back issues have to do with support issues. So a spirit guide being the backbone, you know, means he supports you. Uh, I asked him to stay with me, and I felt a distinct electric charge in my back and hands, you know. So, now, the back we just talked about, now the hands, right? Uh, there's two ways that your hands get charged up, you know. One is you having a little chakras here, means little energy swirls, you know, through when you have a lot of vice force in life force, you know, the squirts out there. Right. And this is you know, you see so many blessings, you know, like a, you know, a nice graceful mudra, you know, um where, you know, um uh, energy is being sent, you know, but through this uh through those chakras, you know. You know, you might feel this as a pressure coming onto you. You know, then there's another way through which you you, you can use energy, shoot energy through the hands. It's like your fingers, right? Um, so that chi can also just go straight through the fingers. You know, and it can be focused, like into you know like a single spot. You know, through three fingers, or just you know you can use it 
like uh, in ways like this and sometimes in the martial arts you know this is one way of putting a lot of chi explosively into a <laughs> acupressure points which can cause a lot of problems right so uh, but you know I kind of like the loose hand you know where like you know all so the energy just comes out like a big baseball glove you know and if you want you can really shoot this out if you learn how to use your chi properly right so this is about the hand so you know he's showing you you know that you can like soup up your hands you know this would be like a hands for hands on healing <laughs> you know or blessing plants so they grow better <laughs> you know everybody loves life force so I have a very concrete experience now that will remind me of the path that I need to take when it comes to healing myself and helping others do the same I choose an empowered path the path of the shame thank you Mm. Of course, yes. You know. So it's a style, you know. And I mean, for instance, the Tibetan Buddhists, you know, they are, I really like the way uh, because you know it's a mix of a, you know the high philosophy of a Buddhism, you know combined with the experience, <laughs> you know, the no bullshit experiences, you know, of of the uh, shamans there, you know. Um, so a decent Tibetan Lama, you know, he knows how to talk to the fairies and he talks to them and, you know, and knows how to transmute and, you know, ghosts and all this, you know, curses, you know, they can see and, and deal with this. You know, there should be, otherwise they pretend this, you know. So, uh, you know, shaman is, is definitely the way to go, you know. They travel through the dimensions, you know, and they connect, you know, with the creation. And they have a wonderful um, experience of the and connection to the divine, you know. I mean, if a monk looks down at shamans <laughs> I think there is spiritual pride there you know um, you know the, some of those shamans are very very realized very very realized about source about God and all kinds of beings you know so yeah very nice ah, sorry about the crying so um, yeah um, and what do we have here Reply. So this was a reply from Joe Semister, and I hear you. I was meant to read this. You are so right, empowering people to heal themselves, to make people feel good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, you know, uh, even with Jesus, you know, par parable, you know, uh, to teach people how to fish, you know, not to feed them fish, but to and to teach people how to fish, how to take care of themselves, you know. It's like a culture, you know, somebody showed you how you brush your teeth. <laughs> you know, so, uh, take care of yourself. I mean, guys, I'm, 60, I'm getting 67 years old. 67 years old. I'm not wearing makeup, I'm not having any surgery. You know, I've been, you know, working hard physically, you know, so... Uh, right? So, uh, you know, you heal yourself, you know, it's all chi and love and, you know, and doing the right things, all right? So, uh, okay, so mostly, okay, so to make people, mostly because they can't do it themselves, it's a shame. It's, but I work in mental health and although that these personal experiences not spoken get embedded, not brought out and individuality gets repressed. All I know, I don't get paid by honoring others, but being myself, by being a real, by being my real, so around others, so being himself around others. I okay. Keep going and I will too. So first of all, you know, when you work in mental health, and um, my respect, you know, this is a very hard work, and um, 
you know, but uh, you know, really protect yourself. You really have to learn, you know, how to, uh, you know, uh, work with your chi, be grounded, you know, take bath and uh, you know, anoint your chakras, because mental health, you know, uh, places are just haunted with ghosts. <laughs> I mean, they're just packed with them, you know, so mental, many multiple personality, you know, disorders are just, you know, ghosts, you know, residing, you know, in, in one person and, you know, and they're bickering around and they don't get peace of mind, <laughs> you know, it's, um, and they're harassed, you know, and, and so uh, those places are haunted with this, you know, um, some people actually come in for depression and then they leave like with 10 ghosts haunting them. You know, the drugs many times, you know, weaken those bondages, you know, so um, if you really want to help them besides, you know, running love and just, you know, clearing out, you know, the bad chi that's there, there's a lot of pain and sorrow and sadness and loneliness there you know, and the pain, so, you know, you have to learn how to do this without smudge if you want to keep your job, you know, there, I have videos, you know, on how to can clear this, you know, a clearing a, what's this, how to keep a place clean or something like this, you know, do a keyword search, you know, that's important that you learn how to do this in a clandestine way, and also, you know, you have to learn the ghost thing. You know, I mean, absolutely, you know, so first of all, to check yourself whether you picked up hitchhikers, you know, because this is the place where you can get affected, you know, not houses, <laughs> sorry for my French here, and uh, graveyards, hospitals, you know, and highways where there have been a lot of accidents, deadly accidents, you know, uh, these are some of the places where you got to be careful not to be in low vibration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, and then when you learn how to, you know, release a ghost, uh, you know, do it as much as you can there, you know. I, I would suggest, you know, you do a private session, you know, I can probably teach you this pretty fast. If you want to be a shaman, yeah, I, I, I teach you, you know, this is a real shamanic work, you know. But without the drumming and the smudging, you know, I show you breathing exercises, <laughs> you know, how to get into that state, right? And then uh, you just ask, you know, and things will happen. You know, I hope this helps. You know, I love you. So uh, I don't know how much time we have. And okay, here's another one. This is uh, Bonnie Leek. I'm just beginning to learn about shamanism. Listening to your guided meditation, I was, as I was ironing, I don't know, ironing, generally, you know, don't operate heavy machinery or drive a car. Okay, ironing, fine. Uh, what I like about shamanism, from the little I know so far, is that it is very individualistic, I think. What I think I will take from you is the structure of the meditation. I'm trying to see if I can integrate the shamanic journey into my busy life with a 15-minute drumming CD. Mm -hmm. I like the relaxation and preparation for the journey. In a self-hypnosis relaxation tape, just once I reach the place, I assume others reach with meditation. I will also take from you going first to the lower self. I think of, she probably means the inner child. Inner child is not really a lower self. <laughs> you know, you just turn it into the divine inner child and you'll be amazed. So, anyhow, uh, I have already an idea who will meet me there, an arch animal figure, to take me to the upper place of self, whatever you would call it. Okay, sure. I think instead of talking so much, once in the upper place, my personality type is dominant intuitive. All right, so you hooked up to the, through your crown chakra then, huh? I will just think of my inner shaman as an inner healing light. Well, I will not ask it any questions, but just experiences and share it with other family members. Okay. 
but knowledge is power believe me that once you know what's going on things become a lot easier but uh, no sh surely not something to be talked out you know it's but uh, understanding what is going on the root issues is important in those kind of cases all right what I hope to take away is a greater sense of peace, connection, and the sharpening of my intuition, so it will be better as I live my life. Yeah. Since I'm experimenting with all this, getting ideas from here and there, I'm not sure what my practice will eventually be. However, I do not think it might be the spirituality in my life I'm looking for. Well, okay, so first of all, the last thing that's sticking in the mind is this, I might think it not to be, I, I do think this might be the spirituality in my life that I'm looking for. Well, spirituality is probably dynamic, you know, um, so, you know, each of those paths, you know, they have their merits, they have their shortcomings, they're good at this level maybe, and then there is something that, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, helps you round things up on another level, so um, so your style might change, you know. So I would say the maxim is like whatever is for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes, you know, or whatever is for your missions the best, for the best timeline, you know, or the highest interest of divine will of God, you know, that be it, you know. So I would not necessarily be attached to shamanism or to being a yogi or to being a priest or this or that, you know, because, I mean, you know, you might, you know, but uh, I would leave that open. You know, you don't want to build a box or a cage around you, you know, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be shamed all my life, you know. There will be a, a time, you know, where you level out with, uh, you know, what you do as a shaman, you know, and then um, there will be something, hey, there is a higher calling, you know, we're supposed to be like work on this and those issues, you know, and that's, uh, you know, a different type of archetype, you know, that we're dealing with here, you know. So, uh, so this might come, so just be open, don't block yourself up, you know, but I mean, shamanism is, is wonderful, right? So, I mean, I consider what I'm doing in a way of modern shamanism, you know, without the dancing, without the austerities, <coughs> uh, you know, without the drum, you know, um, you know, very effective, you know, very efficient, right? <laughs> All right, I hope this helped. And now, uh, one more time, one more, okay. This is from Kelsey Cameron, and it, again, you know, coming to the finding your inner shaman. Wow. I got all the way to the part where my entire body was relaxed and it just felt so good, so amazingly good after a stressful night doing lots of hard work. Not sure when it was, but it felt like maybe 10 minutes in. And then I remembered absolutely nothing else and saw a green circle, and it was like teleported back to my body or something, and then woke up, you know, 45 minutes, you know, very mentally later, mentally very alert, more physically relaxed than I've been in my life. Legit, I feel like I had a massage, no tension anywhere. Yeah, uh, basically. <laughs> Um, yeah, this this happens, you know, uh, when you just really let go. You know, this is an opportunity, you know, for your spirit guides to get through to you. <laughs> and they probably all have been just waiting, <laughs> you know, for you. Ah, oh God, finally, she, she's chilling out, you know, she's relaxing. You know, and they probably have been, like, really helping you. You know, and, and uh, you know, uh, with the meditation, as we give them permission to help you and encouraging all this, you know. And so they have been pitching in, you know, and then, you know, there is a time, you know, where, uh, you know, you're just out of the body, or your subtle body is out of the body, and so they can, uh, like, work on your body better, you know, because there is no more judgment and limitation of what is possible, <laughs> you know. 
I mean, there are those cases where in hypnosis, you know, somebody could look through his daughter and see the watch behind her, you know. I mean, this is mind over matter stuff is possible if the belief system has changed, you know. This is a very revolutionary in physics and hasn't been talked about, you know. So anyhow, so, uh, uh, yeah, oh God, now I got sidetracked. Um, okay, so yeah, relaxation. Uh, and so, you know, so you're taken out of the body and then they also, you know, upgraded you on the body. Basically, you went home, you know, into the heavenly spa. And, uh, you know, time is very different than the astral plane. So they probably could do a lot of, you know, healing on you there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and then, you know, you went back into the body and just feel like... Uh, you know, like gangbusters, <laughs> you know, and it showed you, they showed you this stuff works, you know, the best thing is the mind blower, you know, you like, this is better than a massage, you know, how is this possible, you know, so your box, you thought what was possible, you know, uh, was like widened, <laughs> you know, widened, you know, yeah, this is possible, this, more stuff possible, but you haven't experienced this yet. You know, we don't, you know, they don't want to blow your mind completely, you know, but that is possible. All right. So I hope this helps, and I love you. And so just send in questions. Um, you know, best is to email and, you know, just really face them as questions so I know, you know, whether it's private or public. I don't want to get into any trouble. Of course, I'm trying to be, I try to do my best. Right. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope we can continue this. You know, I love you. Uh, you know, do the uh, usual subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified. Tell your friends, and smile like an idiot. <laughs>